Biter Gaming presents So, you guys have watched this old man make his patrols for the last three hours, and so far nothing. Um, you can continue to watch him throughout the night, or you can do something else. It's up to you guys. Um, I would actually like to cast uh, Detect Thoughts on him. Alright, what does he have to beat? Uh, wisdom 16. Okay. Alright, so you cast Detect Thoughts on him, and you detect nothing. Nothing? What, what, what do you mean, nothing? Your, seems like your spell may have failed. Fuck. Beat, beat it with an 18. Damn. You said, um, what were you casting again? Uh, Detect Thoughts. Ah, okay. How close is this guy? Oh, wait, no, that wouldn't help. I'm gonna say never mind. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the closest, he gets to be about maybe 40 feet, 30 to 40 feet away from you. Okay, yeah, Zone of Truth isn't gonna help, because I'd have to go fucking talk to the guy. <laughs> Hey, buddy, by the way. <laughs> hey, it just so happens I happen to also be out here late at night. Right. Uh, you kill your grandson? <laughs> Get stabbed oh, in the process. <laughs> no, you didn't. Did you fuck your grandson? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. I'll leave. <laughs> hey, buddy, is a hot dog a sandwich? Yeah, that wouldn't be a <laughs> deliberate lie, though, if he believes it. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> It's a hot dog and sandwich. <laughs> All right, so what's the plan? Cave. I'm thinking the cave. Yeah. Is that where those tracks led? Possibly. I think. They... I think like they didn't. The the tracks didn't lead all the way to the cave, but they were kind of going in that direction. Um. Maybe. How? It's late. Late, right? Would the would the temple be open still, so we could ask questions about the uh, third victim? Temple's always open. Perfect. Uh, I say we maybe go to a fucking temple. Ask if anybody knows uh, that third victim. She'd go strolling by herself, or if she maybe was uh, taken over there. I guess that's a good idea. All right. So you guys. Start making your way to the very quaint temple. You see that the uh, candles inside are very well lit. And you see, peeking through the open window, you see the what appears to be a clergyman, a holy man, standing there praying at an altar. Alright. Um, we'll go ahead and Kind of open the doors and head in. You open the doors and it makes a loud creaking sound. And he gets up and turns and looks at you. Hello. Welcome. How can I help you here? Are you just here to think upon some things? I actually, we got a couple questions for you. I was told a holy woman... Was uh, you a victim of one of these murders in the town? Hmm. Yes. Would you know so, anything about that? I heard she might uh, go on nighttime walk. She doesn't really go on nighttime walks. Never really went to the edge of town too much. Well, Was she, she acting out of the ordinary. Sorry, I keep fucking cutting you off, Father. I apologize. <laughs> oh no, no. She would do a lot of house calls, so her leaving, I guess you'd say, the temple is not unheard of. However, the edge of town, she wouldn't have gone there 
where her body was found is, well, even more perplexing because she would have never gone to the cave. Everybody here stays away from the cave. Is there something in the cave? The townsfolk believe there is. Possibly bandits. Uh, creatures of some sort. It's hard, hard to really tell. I've myself have fallen victim of the murmurs of what could be in there, and I personally would like to keep my head firmly attached to my body, if you get my meaning. I understand that. I understand that. Uh, Father, can I ask you a question here? Um, you said you frequently made house calls. Do you happen to have a record of maybe the last five days? Well, when exactly was she uh, murdered? Oh, I'd say a little less than a week ago. Perhaps. Would you happen to have the house calls from the day she was murdered and, uh, you know, maybe two days prior as well? If that information, if she kept that information, it would have been on her person. Um, no such information was found here. I, of course, am not originally from here. I came to replace her. So, I wouldn't know where any of that information would have been kept. The prior parties that were here, however, did scour this temple thoroughly. Came up empty-handed as well. Hmm. And uh, on her body, who exactly would have uh, contents of that? Would that be the uh, local bailiff or the sheriff? Oh, she was cremated. But did they keep her personal belongings, or did they burn them, too? She was burned in her outfit. Felt fitting. Uh, however, she had no personal belongings on her when her found, from my understanding. Okay, is, uh, would you happen to know who was, uh, who was in charge of that crime scene? Well, the, uh, the guards were, when they were here. A lot of them left. Few of them did stay behind. One of them did rally up the uh, investigation until she was killed, and that's when they all just kind of went their separate ways. All right, and uh, Father, I, I know you said you just came here. Where exactly did you happen to come from? Just interested. Uh, I came from Cold Mallow. It's a coastal, ah. coastal town. All right. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, I'm glad you're here. Glad to see that they at least got some type of deity in this city here. Yes. Um, can I bother you for some holy water? Uh, Running a little low on my supply here, and as a you know, as a paladin, I should probably have some on my person. I didn't uh, didn't think to pick up any before I left, so I figured I could uh, grab some from here. Certainly, I'll uh, get it packaged for you. Uh, do you happen to have some vials, or shall I provide those for you as well? Ah, if you could provide the vials. Uh, I don't happen to have those on my person, unfortunately. Think nothing of it. Think nothing of it. We may be of a different faith, however, at the end of the day, we all do believe in a higher form of uh, beings. So, I will happily get you those vials. Bless you, Father. Thank you. He walks away towards the back of the building and disappears behind one of the doors. You could hear some drawers opening and some clinging of glass. And while he's getting that, what are you doing? Um, I kind of turned back to the um, party and I'm like, you think we should follow down this lead before heading to the cave? See if the guards have got anything of... Uh, her personal records guards of her house calls. Oh, so there's nobody at the guard station? That's why the old man uh, patrols. So can we go check the guard station, see if they left anything behind them? You, you can, yeah. Anybody want to go check the old guard station? Um, Yori's not disagreeing, but while you guys are waiting for the holy water, um, DM, is there like a tithing box somewhere in, in the temple? Uh, yes, at the altar... Uh, there is a box for collections. Um, 
he'll kind of just drop a few, uh, few uh, gold pieces into the tithe box or the collection box and just um, kind of... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, he'll just kind of kind of say half to himself like uh, I don't really believe in any higher power but there's one out there. Please lead that little boy to the other side of the bridge. And he'll just kind of, you know, nod his head for a second and then exhale and turn back around, face the roof. He's like, what? Oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. He's like, uh, I, I, I wouldn't mind checking out the guard station if you all want to. As you stand there and, you know, everything that you've just done in front of the collection box, you feel this strange feeling of just absolute calm pour over you. You don't understand it, but it's very much inviting. I, uh, um, I, I'd say to you, you know, I, I really would like to make a donation too. Do you have a few coins I could borrow? <laughs> Think of it as I donated for the both of us. Oh, so, damn, I really wanted to see my own prayer, but okay. <laughs> so, as I see him yeah, doing this, cry. you fake cry. <laughs> So as I see this happening, um, uh, Giovanni looks over at uh, Yuri and just slowly reaches into his um, backpack and produces his own alms box and just slowly, while not breaking eye contact with Yuri, sets it down on the closest table to him. Almost as if he's inviting him to uh, drop some money in uh in Giovanni's alms box as well. Uh he'll kinda chuckle and, and drop a gold piece in. And I uh do a sign of the cross. I I say uh in nome de potri et filio sancti and fucking uh do the sign of the cross and then pick up the alms box and put it back into my fucking backpack. As you're doing all this, you see the uh, holy man walk out, and he's got six vials of uh, water, or watery uh, solution in them. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, I didn't know how many to give you, but uh, yeah, I figured, why not more than less? So here's six of them. Think nothing of it, and uh, if I can be of any service as well, please let me know. All right. Well, I appreciate it, Father. Um, and uh, listen, I'm not gonna, not gonna, you know, leave here without uh, giving a little something to the uh, to the temple here. I take out the uh, take out the platinum piece and just go up to the uh, alms box at the actual temple and go and put that in there. And uh, you know, just go head back to the party. He gives you a nod. He goes, "Bless you, my child." Thank you, Father. Maybe Bless of a different belief. Like I said, we believe in a higher power. That's right. That's right. I just fucking nod in agreement and uh, kind of head towards the door. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow behind them. Okay, so you guys are going to the uh, the guard station? Uh, yeah, if everybody else is in agreement. Sure. sure. Nice. Yes. You guys begin the walk to the guard station, and as you guys are walking towards the guard station, you catch out of the corner of your eye the old man still patrolling, just walking, you know, with that limp, just continuously beating the same path, and... After a few short minutes, you guys get to the 
just dark, hard station. Mm. After um, you. A knock on the door, just in case there happens to be anybody inside still. As you knock on the door, you feel the door just kind of give a little bit. Like, it's, uh, the door's been well used. And it's kind of been, uh, it's attachment to the wall. It's just very weak. And I look back at the group. Um, I say, well, it looks like this fucking door has been pretty well used. Just like your mother. Yeah, I'm fucking around. Uh, let's, uh, everybody ready to go inside, take a look at some shit? Sure. Yeah, let's let me just, it. let me, let me get my lantern out. Since, well... Is dark. You get out your lantern and you light it, and it shines a nice little warm glow onto the uh, onto the door, the wooden door. Onwards to the reading. Doors if there's right. any reading to be done. We'll go ahead and walk in. Um, are there any torches on the wall to like light up so that the, uh, the fucking room is lit up as well so we don't have to just go by lantern light? So as you grab the handle, you go to push it open and you get stopped because the door's locked. Mm. Ooh. The door, you said the door's locked? Yeah, the door's locked. This is the same door. I thought it was given. Or is this a different door? It's it's being held onto the wall, but it's like, you know how like when a door is a, a bit loose? You know, when you knock on it, you kind of feel it give a little bit, but it's oh, locked. Okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, <laughs> would I be able to tell if the lock is magical? You could do an arcana check if you'd like. Sure. Uh, 16. All right, that lock is not magical. It is just a mundane old lock. Bam. I pull out my thieves' tools. Oh, I was about to do the same thing. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, don't worry, fellas. I'll get us in here. Any gold we find is mine. As you pull out your thieves' tools and start picking, I need you to make a uh, sleight of hand check. Sixteen plus twelve. <laughs> plus twelve, did you say? Plus twelve, mm -hmm. yeah. That'd Jeez. be twenty-eight. Fuck. Well, as you tell the the group, you know, any gold that you find in there is yours. You just unlock the door with utter ease, yeah, almost as if you've done this thousands of times before. And as you Stand up, you push the door open, and it opens very slowly. <clears throat> and it is dark. Is it, a, is it a heavy door? Uh, somewhat, yeah. Heavy for you. So was my ex-wife. All right, so I go in there and start <laughs> looking around. All right, so as you walk in there, you see there's a couple of chairs... It looked to be just shoved to the side of the building. The uh, desk that is see seated in the uh, middle of the room is just kind of covered in dust. The drawers have been ripped out of it. Nothing of value looks like is in the desk, at least. Uh, the few chests that were in one piece that were along the wall are currently... Uh, caved in. Seems, it appears as though somebody who was there prior wasn't too happy that those chests were uh, empty. If you'd like, you can make an investigation check. 
Is that all of us? Uh, just him, because he's the only one that's in the room right now. Seven plus ten. Seventeen. Jesus Christ. And two. <laughs> all right, so you, uh, are looking around on the floor, and as, uh, what's his name? Fenric's, uh, lantern is kind of casting a, a glow into the room. You see a shine between the between the stones of the floor. And as you get closer, you realize it is a singular gold piece lodged <laughs> in between the uh, the uh, bricks. Hey, you hit the jackpot. I let out a moan. Oh my oh. god. I grabbed the I grabbed the gold piece and I put it in my change purse. I think he I think the goblin just jizzed his pants. <laughs> and I say and I say I'm almost up to three percent I'm almost up three percent on this trip. <laughs> Aside from that, there's nothing in the uh in the guard shack. If it uh, if it did have anything, it's been long, long looted. Uh. So I come out and I say, "Hey guys, if you want to take a look, go ahead." But I I didn't find anything in there. Hmm. What did I do with my die? I'm a magician. Um, I locked. I'd like to walk into the guardhouse and. Try and find any sort of books or files or just papers. Okay, you walk into the uh, guard shack and as you're looking around, you're seeing a whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of uh, empty. Like I said, there's not much uh, going on in there. If there was anything, it's long, it's long gone. Could I do an investigation to look for any loose bricks in the wall? You most certainly can, yes. So I'll just do it. Uh, 19. So you take your time and you start feeling each brick on this, uh, on this building and in the, on the floor. And as you're feeling them, you kind of just... I have no luck, but right before you decide to give up, you feel one of the bricks are loose. And coincidentally, it's the same brick that um, Tenley pulled the gold piece out. And you start wiggling it up with your fingers and toss it to the side, and you see at the bottom of it you see a little coin pouch. Or what appears to be a coin, a coin pouch. Can I see what he's doing in there? You can roll a perception check. <laughs> hey, uh, Tenley, so about that contract. <laughs> and roll it at disadvantage because now he's, he's <laughs> distracting you. <laughs> Watch him still get it. <laughs> that honestly, that'd be pretty funny. Oh shit! Disadvantage. I got a one plus. What do I got here? Just got a one. Oof. You heard the oh, word a one. Nat one. You heard the, the one plus zero. You I heard got a the one. one. Oh, a nat one. You heard the word. So you're kind of looking at what's going on in there, but the second you heard, um. Yori say contract. contract. Your head snapped quicker than your nose could even follow it. It's almost like it trailed behind you. And just the word contract piqued your interest. I shove uh forgetting about what forgetting about what, what Fenric is doing, I, I shove a contract and a pen <laughs> into Giva into uh Yuri's hand and I say Yeah. Just sign right here, and, and you'll be a star. 
Well, hold on. I I, I want to go over some of the some of the you know some of the terms first. So, what's the uh you know what's the uh, split between the talent and the management? Oh, you'll be well compensated. We we'll get you uh, your own your own horse and carriage. We'll set up all the tour dates for you. We'll we'll make sure that you're well well compensated. Can I can I read the contract to see how much he's bullshitting me? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It be allows you to read it. My attorney's been all through this. It's a fair deal. Well, I I I love to take your word for it, but you know, you got to be sure on these things. And I just want to read. I want to read through the terms. <laughs> hey, do you allow him to read the uh, the contract? Um, I allow him to read it, and uh, what does the ter- what does the contract say? I read through it with him. Um, <laughs> and while I'm reading it through with him, I'm gonna roll a deception check. Is that? Oh yeah, go ahead. All right. Oh, that was almost a fucking twenty. Right. Fuck. What'd you get? It's a two plus nine. It's an eleven. All right. And uh, what's your uh, passive uh, perception, Yori? My passive perception is uh, thirteen. Damn. <laughs> All right. So. The... So I show him the points in the contract, and I tell him, "See, this here says that we will." compensate you with a huge bonus in the beginning. We'll give you 1,000 platinum coins. They will, they will will be the coins that you use for your marketing, your and to keep you going on the tour. At the end here where it says it's it's uh, it's all owed back to us within 18 months, you can just ignore that. As long as we make our money, we won't be hassling you about that. Uh, and you're going to be a star. I, I, I mean, that does all sound well and good, but, you know, I... Maybe... You, you know, I, I apologize. I guess I was a bit hasty. Maybe we should finish this up before, I, before we worry about paperwork and all that. You know, you don't want... I, I, I don't, I don't want to have something else in my mind and then, oh, you know, sign an unco- a contract in uncertain terms and, you know, and screw myself over, screw you over, something like that. I, I wouldn't want any of that to happen. Well, well, let me ask you this. When we were at the tavern, I, I noticed that you gave Giovanni a, a platinum coin. I... You did not share one with me. Why? Why is that? Do you want me to help you? Take down this beast, or, or would you rather I, I just sat on the sidelines and watched? And I put my hand out. <laughs> I thought you said we need to do anything it took to help this town, and I would like to intimidate him. Hmm. All right. Um, Rolling intimidation, and uh, Carnivaro, roll a uh, constitution saving throw. Oh wow, that's a natural twenty. Oh fuck! Damn. Oh, shit. Where is Constitution anyway? It'd be on your uh, just your uh, stats. You know, do I hold on before this happens? Do I see anything going on between the two? Yeah. Do I see that he? This is uh, this is currently happening. Uh, we could say that you're seeing a conversation, and you can see that uh, Yuri's getting a little. No, getting a little uh, bass in his voice. Okay, so it is getting. I can see it's getting a bit heated. Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, I wouldn't say heated, but definitely, you know, it's getting there. Okay. Um, I would like to hold on. I got a, I got a fifteen, but my constitution says. Uh... Oh wait, no. Go ahead. You go. Go first. Yeah, so I would like to go ahead and note the fact that one of my passive abilities is Aura of Protection. 
Uh, so whenever you or a friendly creature within 10 feet must make a saving throw, the creature gains a bonus to the saving throw equal to my charisma modifier with a minimum bonus of one. Oh, Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to protect my investment over here. <laughs> And um, is it my charisma modifier is plus three. So that 15 plus whatever your saving throw addition plus another three, I guess, is how that would work out, right? Yeah. So uh, I rolled a const I rolled a 15, and then my constitution says 14, but also says plus two. So it would be plus so that means two. What I got, plus two? Plus so it'd be, three. It would be, uh, yeah, be a 20. 20. So... In this instance, normally, if it was a, you know, just a regular 20, I would say Defender wins. However, um, because it is a natural 20, we'll, I'll have to say that uh, Yori won that one, but I don't know how intimidated it's, how intimidated you're going to, you're going to get. That's ultimately up to you, but you will be intimidated to an extent. Okay. Well, I mean, was obviously, one. well, you're, you, I mean, you don't have to give me a, a platinum coin and for sure I'll, I'll do, I'll do my best, but it just, I don't understand. It doesn't seem fair that you're handing out platinum coins to one member of the crew and, and to me, I, I, I get nothing. That's, uh, it's poor leadership if you ask me, but there's nothing I can do about it. Yori kind of just rolls his eyes and flicks the flying coin at him. Flying whatever. Oh. And I look over. I look over. And I'm like, uh, maybe if you're handing out platinum coins again. And uh, <laughs> Fenric, as you as all this shit is going on behind you, you're staring at this uh, little money pouch. Um. Do you pick it up, put it away, or what do you do? Uh, I'd like to use Mage Hand to actually grab it. Okay. So, so you cast Mage Hand, and your hand, your Mage Hand, I should say, picks up this little, uh, little bundle of potential gotcha. money and is currently carrying it. <laughs> oh boy, tiny goodie. Um, I like to, well, I'll take the pouch from my mage hand and peek inside the, the well, pouch to see what it is. I need you to make a constitution. I'm just kidding. You just see a bunch <laughs> of gold pieces just in there. Here it looks to be about at least a couple hundred. Okay. Uh, I'd like to store it in my, well, in my pouch. I'd like to store the pouch have in my pouch. <laughs> All right, so you store it in your pouch. All right, so now what? Now you turn around and see what's going on, or do you keep looking? Uh, yeah, I'd walk out of the guardhouse and, well, see what's happening between Yori and Tensley. Okay. I turn to Fenric and say, did you find any coins? Uh, I mean, you kind of found them. You just didn't go in deep enough. I'll give you some, but I'm keeping the rest. I think I'm entitled to at least 75%. I'm the one who got the door open. I just gave you a Like you said, I'm the one who going. actually found them. I'm the one who actually found him. You just went a little deeper. It's a story of my hey, people's life. Hey, gentlemen. The fuck are we doing here? Did we find anything useful inside that fucking shit other than gold coins? Or are we going to go let's, over let's there to the cave? The matter at hand. The matter at hand, what? You just got a platinum fucking coin. You guys hear in the distance a woman, Shut the fuck up! <laughs> People are trying to sleep! <laughs> I put my hand out to uh, Fenric and I say, Are you going to give me what I'm owed or are we going to make a lot of noise and get the, the guards called on us? There are no guards. Fucking We're twice. right at that There's fucking... fucking guards here. Either give them the coins or fucking shut the goblin up and let's go to the cave. 
There's more at stake than coins. And Rick. Uh, and Rick. And Rick, I you don't give... gotta give this fuck a shit. Don't <laughs> fucking listen to him. I will be petty Jeez. and give him a single gold coin. <laughs> but I'll follow it up with saying, if you're going to be this rude, I won't give you any more than one gold piece at a time. Boy, Faye. I happily take the <laughs> gold coin and give him a dirty look. <laughs> Fucking hell. So you take the gold coin and give him a dirty look, and <laughs> now what? <laughs> Can we please go kill this thing that's murdering innocent civilians? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do it. Let's I go. think that's a great fucking idea. Let's go. Thank you. And I'll just ride ahead of everybody on my mage hand. Clearly <laughs> a little ticked off. All right, so you guys, you guys are uh, making your way to where... The cave was signified, and it's outside of town through a forest, and as you guys are walking, and everyone's just kind of staying quiet at the uh, tension that's been brewing, apparently, you guys finally see, a, or well, Yuri, you finally see a couple of tracks. They seem to be at least at least a week old and they are the same canine tracks but they're kind of intermittent there you see one and you don't maybe a couple hundred yards you see another one the, the tracks are very strange but guys finally uh get to the cave and you see that the opening of the cave has been frequently used very recently as a matter of fact and the distinct smell of what appears to be rotted meat blood and something else that you're not quite sure what it is you, all, you can all make a nature check if you'd like Actually, could I do use my uh, Define Sense ability? Okay, what's that do? Uh, the presence of strong evil registers on your senses like a noxious odor and powerful good rings like heavenly music. As an action, you can open your awareness to detect such forces until the end of your next turn. You know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 foot that's not behind total cover. Also know the type of any being that I sense, but not the identity. Okay, so you are outside of a cave. You don't know the cave system, but technically they'd all be behind cover. Um, if you want to use it on the inside, you can, but, I mean, it's up to you. Okay. And technically, um, I'm getting fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record, my nature check was a 16. Okay. Mine was a 3. Uh, yeah. And what about you, uh, Benner? Mine came up to a 13. Huh? 12. Okay. So, as you guys are detecting these odors, there's one that just permeates through your nose more so than everybody else's, Yori. Um, it's a smell you've never smelled before. However, it is... Very pungent. It doesn't smell like rotted flesh, and it doesn't smell like bone. But it it has a uh, a very denseness to its smell. It's very putrid. Ugh! And he kind of just like covers his hand with his ma or covers his mouth with one hand. God, that's horrible. <laughs> If I had a claw, I would cover my face. But good God. Oof. Well, there's definitely Jesus. something in here. 
It smells like your grandmother's your muff. Face with some poor gold coin. What? <laughs> what did this man say? <laughs> <laughs> what I say? What? Mm -mm. No. Uh... What, what did Tenley say? I'll gladly cover your face for some more gold coins. Yes. All right, gentlemen. So, what are you doing? That man's like a reverse I'm, wimpy. I'm just like <laughs> going against like my sense of smell and just trying to like choke back the gagging that I'm currently experiencing. I'm gonna press deeper into the cave because there's obviously something here, and my intuition is telling me, well, it's got to be related to the monster because it, it's a weird, bad smell that I've never smelled before. Uh, All right. So you're I'd like to, here. You're I'd like in. to lead in front of him with my lantern. Okay. I'm okay. gonna go ahead and uh, follow Yuri. So as you guys, I enter. arrange myself to the back of the crew, but keep going. And I say, uh, I think we found him, guys. So as you guys venture into the cave. You go down the narrow path, and who's at the front again? It was you, uh, Tenley? Or not Tenley. No, it was, it was me. Uh, uh, you're a Fenric. Fen yeah. Fenric. You guys see a uh, light at the, well, lack of a better term, at the end of the tunnel. See what appears to be torchlight. As you guys get closer, you hear voices. Those voices are getting closer and closer. Okay, at um, this point, I would like to extinguish my lantern and then proceed to, well, sneak to not be seen. Uh, roll a stealth check. Oh, that's the wrong thing. 26. Jesus. All right. So... Anyone else stealthing, or you guys just see uh, Fenric close the close off the lantern, and you guys are now swarmed with total darkness. Those of you who can see in the dark, you can see sort of in the dark. Only in shades of gray. Yep. Can I see um, in the dark? Yes, you can. I uh, don't. I uh, I st I stay in the back, but I'm I am gonna go stealth mode. Okay, roll a uh, stealth check as well. Um, seven plus twelve. I got a nineteen. Okay. Nice. I'm. I'm not really. I. I don't think Yori's really sure what to do. He can't really stealth without taking off the necklace and not being able to move. Um. So he's just kind of going to call out. Uh, he's just going to call out. Uh, I mean, you no know, harm. Please, whoever you are, I'm here to help. Calling out to the, you're calling I, out I, to I, the uh, to the voices up ahead. Yeah, and I'm going to kind of separate myself from everybody else who's hiding. I'm going to kind of scoot like forward like five ten feet okay and what's uh giovanni doing um yeah so i i got fucking plate armor so that ain't gonna work out sneaking so i kind of follow yuri and uh as i'm following him i'm like i kind of mock him oh please fucking mr mr monster that's killed fucking three people and made 18 more disappear <laughs> i mean you no fucking harm <laughs> Jesus, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, announcing the fact that there's food on the way? There's people up there. It's not a monster. Yeah, we don't know that. It could be fucking, uh, what if it's a werewolf? <laughs> Vampire or some shit? You hear the voices get I real silent. I whisper to them from my hiding spot. Guys, if you want, you can always give me your belongings for safekeeping while you're in case they, they mean harm. I look Same. back and just kind of shoot him a fucking disapproving look. Who speaks Draconic? 
Uh, anybody does. I, I, I do. don't. Do you? I speak draconic. Oh. Oh, shit. Okay. So, you guys are all hearing very guttural grunts, almost like barks. However, Tenley, you hear, gotta keep the treasure safe. Intruders are here. <laughs> and that was in Draconic, by the way. As he hear that, hears that, I also feel like a fucking stiff, something stiff poke into the back of my leg. You mean in the back? You all are the same fucking height. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, I feel something <laughs> poke into my ass then. Does anyone understand what they're saying? Yes, I do. We definitely are in trouble here. These these men are, are talking to each other about keeping the wolf safe. I think it's the wolf we're looking for. Um, can I, ins well, yeah, I guess, can I inside him? You could, but it would be a disadvantage because it is in a different language. That's fine. Watch him hit nat twenty again. He hit no shit. <laughs> oh my god! Double nat twenty. Just rolled a nat twenty. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> well, hold on. Let me. Hit, let me. It's a disadvantage. So, I. I no. Dude, I'm not even kidding. I rolled another nat twenty. No fucking. Way. <laughs> I'm, not, yes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I need to get your dice. <laughs> I know. Physical dice are the way to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you. What do What do I roll? I don't roll anything. You don't roll anything. Um, just knowing what you know about uh, Tenley, it's very possible that he's full of shit. Hard to tell because again, different language, but it's very possible he's full of shit. I'll kind of just. Not like an irritated tone, but a tone to show that, like, I'm not playing around. Be like, look, I'll be at the front of the pack. Just translate for me, okay? Okay, they said we have to protect the wolf. That's what they said. Sure. So, um, I'll call out, like, listen, we really don't mean you any harm. We're just here to kill the beast that's been hurting and murdering civilians. And I kind of, uh, like look to Tenley in the darkness to get him to see if he'll translate. Do you translate? Um, I yell out in draconic and a bunch of grunts. Uh, 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 and what I tell them is you you better hide your treasure quick because we're coming for it. Uh, like, roll an intimidation at advantage. Uh, 14 plus, let me see what I got here. 15. 14 plus 1. Alright, so you uh, say it with uh, some conviction and all you hear in is just a howl from a beast, like a like a guttural roar. Um, it doesn't sound like a uh, like a wolf. Doesn't sound like a canine. Sounds very draconic. And then as that one ends, you hear another one. And when that one ends, you, it takes a moment, but you hear more and more and more. All, and suddenly <laughs> the cave is full of roars. Oh, fuck. And I, I, turn, I turn back to him and I say, what did you do? I told him we need me. We mean no harm. I'm telling you, these these things are are crazy. They were talking about protecting the wolf. Do I believe him? Perhaps we should go back. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't believe. It's not him at really. All. It's not really the way of an adventurer. But perhaps we should go back. I don't know. You fucking um, go back then. Um, I'm here. I'm with you guys. 
Can I do my uh, my thing? Are we at the point where they're out of cover? Yet? Some of them could be considered out of cover, not all of them. Okay. Um, um, are they within 30 feet out of cover? Nope. Those ones that are? Oh, you How mean close feet out are of, they? 30 feet out of, out of cover? Let's are they say... within 30 feet of us and no. out of cover? Uh, how close are they? They're about 60. That's at 60 least what feet. it sounds like. It's, uh, so I'm going to go ahead, drop down, because I don't have anything equipped. I'm going to drop down on my feet and sprint down all fours to use my full 30 foot of movement to get within 30 feet of them. Um, and then I'm going to use my divine sense to find out uh, if they're evil or good and if they're celestial fiend or undead or what type of being they are. And that's the, uh, what's it called? Tech good and evil? Uh, divine sense. That's just an active ability. I could use oh. it about four times and this is the first time. Double check. Where is that? All right. Yeah. Okay. So you uh, do not detect any kind of celestial or fiend. However, your uh, nose is filled with a noxious odor, and almost to the point where it's overpowering. Okay, do I know, did did I detect the type of creature, though? There's no way to detect this type of creature, but it's not the ones that you can detect. Well, I don't think it's a limit on what can detect. I think those were just, like, the, uh, not fucking etc. What the god the fuck is the word? Like, examples, there we go. Jesus, I'm retarded. <clears throat> uh, it just says, you know the location of any celestial fiend or undead. Well, you know the type of any being whose presence you sense. Because you know the type celestial fiend or undead of any being. Uh, okay, well. So they're not a celestial fiend or undead? Nope. So what the fuck are they then? Hard to tell, but from what you can uh -oh. tell, they are evil. Okay, so they're <laughs> evil. Alright, give me a second here. Let me see if I've got any other fucking options. Uh... You guys start hearing what sounds to be like feet stamping in mud. It runs towards you. Mm, fuck my tits. Yeah. Hold on. Fenric, put that lantern back on. Well, uh, I actually have a quick question. Joy, does your... I guess, does your hand glow? Um... Yeah, it does. It's it's like blue ethereal magic. It's a dull glow, but it's not enough to like you know see anything clearly. Can you cast Sir William Smith and slap the shit out of all of them? <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, hang on. Never mind. I was looking through my thing things that I can do. I'm able to cast darkness. But if your hand is a second level or lower spell, it'll get dispelled. Cause at least, yeah, because it says the spell that created the light is dispelled. Um, it's it's not a spell. It's essentially just like an enchantment on the magic necklace I have. Oh yeah, I've got daylight. If we want to do daylight, yeah, because I can't see. Like, I I think I think at least two at least two of us can't yeah. see in the dark, right? Me and Fenric? I can. I could see in the dark. I think it might just be you. Well, can goblins see in the dark? Yep, they got yeah, they can. Yeah. We, yeah. We can all I, would think, I would think it would be pretty dumb to not cast any light spell that any of you guys have. I don't know. Um, like, why I mean, I got daylight because all we got, all we could see is dim if it's not like, you know, if yeah, it's in darkness, it's just dim. Um. All right, it's a 60 foot radius. So. Just gonna, I guess, go ahead and cast fucking daylight, and so, I'm gonna cast it on my position. Now, does that move with you, or does it just stay stationary? Um, give me a second here. 
I read this yeah, thing. So, 60 foot radius sphere of light spreads out from a point you choose within range. Spheres of bright light sheds dim light for an additional 60 foot, so 120 foot total. You choose a point on an object you're holding or one that isn't being worn or carried. Light shines from the object and moves with it, completely covering the affected object with an opaque object, such as a bowl or a helm, blocks the light. Okay, so I mean, um, I guess I cast it on my fucking. Can I cast it on my hand? Does that count as a fucking object? Uh, uh, if you have like a weapon yeah, or like a shield, you can do that. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna pull out. What's a fucking one-handed weapon? Oh. I'm gonna pull, pull out, out my penis because Balthazar's back. There's <laughs> Balthazar's here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my rapier and cast. That somehow works. Fucking light on there, I guess. Cast I got a rapier too, and that's not my image. <laughs> right, here, so I'm barely newer. Um, so all right. you cast, uh, what was it? Sunlight? Uh, daylight. Daylight. I cast daylight you on cast... my rapier. Daylight onto your sword, and immediately, the just the bright light fills the cavern. Those of you that have dark vision are temporarily kind of shielding yourself from the brightness of this uh, light, as are you, uh, Yori. But mm -hmm. as you guys recover from that, almost immediately, you see about thirty feet in front of you these reptilian dragon-like creatures you guys know them as kobolds but they are just running and as they get to that light they shield their eyes and just scream out their uh skin their orange cute skin is burning in this light almost uh, i fucking yell, I yell out. out in draconian Oh, yeah, that's right. They don't speak fucking common. I yell out in Draconian, if you if you give us your treasure, we'll, we'll let you live, and we'll turn off the light. Give us your tre- I, I, in, in your Draconian, I yell out, give us your treasure, or light will follow you everywhere you go, and you will certainly die. Roll a persuasion check. That's a that's a hard one. Did you roll? Oh, there we go. Uh, I just did eighteen. Wow. How many elevens have you rolled? <laughs> Holy shit. That was a, that was a seventeen plus one. Uh -huh. All right, so you, the kobolds are shielding their eyes as best they can as they hear you, and they just immediately throw down their makeshift weapons onto the ground and scream back at you, take, take the treasure, take the treasure, just turn off the light. I, uh, I step out in front of Giovanni and I, I yell to them where's the treasure and we'll turn off the light one of them is trying to shield his face as best he can he's screaming through his teeth as the other one says further in further in in draconic Um, let's see here. Okay, in Draconic, I say, who's been capturing, who's been eating the hearts of the people in this town? Creature, or the kobold, uh, dismisses your question. We had a deal is what it says in Draconic. And I... The treasure is not in my hands... So the light will stay on. Who's been eating the hearts? 
again it implores you that a deal was struck to lay down the tree give us your treasure and the light will be turned off and yet it threw its treasures onto the floor and the light has not been turned off okay I pick up all the treasure you pick up some and I say Mm -hmm. that's that was their treasure was the light that was their treasure Oh shit. I say in Draconic, you don't have any gold? How close are you to the, uh, how close did you get to the, uh, treasures? Um, I mean, I'm did just you get right up to right it? Okay. Alright, so you. So I'm probably getting 30 feet away from them. Okay, because they only threw their treasures down about five feet in front of them. Okay, so I walk up to the treasures and look around, and it's is it just weapons? Yeah, it's just a just a couple of makeshift daggers. Okay, um, I say in Draconic, you said the treasure is deeper in. Go get it and bring it to us, or the whole cavern will be filled with light, and you will surely die. What's your armor class? Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen, okay. So as you're saying like that, as you're saying that, you see the kobold swing on you as hard. I mean, just swing on you hard and striking you in the mouth, and you take two damage, two blunt or yeah, uh, bludgeoning damage from this punch from this kobold as it hisses at you and tells you no deal, no deal. I I tell him you will surely die from the light. <clears throat> and um, oh, fuck. Uh Yori would actually kinda like zoom forward and just kinda hold up his hands and be like, Stop. Everyone stop. And um DM mm. if possible I would I would like to cast detect thoughts on one of the kobolds because I've noticed something in the spell that says um, the creature does not have to speak the same language with me than me as me as long as it speaks a language it mm-hmm. can understand me and I can understand its thoughts it says questions verbally di- directed at the target creature naturally shape the course of its thoughts you can also use this spell to detect the presence of thinking creatures you can't see so I would like to kind of if I can I would like to use the spell to kind of shape its thoughts to ask it questions okay you can yeah Okay. I would like to ask it, um, do you know about the beast that's been murdering people? It, as it's still shielding its eyes, its ears, or not its ears, sorry, its uh, scales kind of furrow with uh, interest as to who's speaking to it. You hear in language that you can understand what beast there is no beast just us so you've been the ones murdering townspeople we've murdered no such person then who don't know we just got here can I do I notice that he's having like a can I can I Notice that he's having a conversation, like asking questions. Yeah, because I'm verbally in another language. Questions. Yeah, yeah, I'm no, verbally you're asking verbally questions. You can understand I'm... the questions he's he's asking. You just okay. don't know the answer that he's getting back. Can I go ahead and help him out here and can contrast what the fuck am I saying? Can I cast a zone of truth on like directly? Because what was I saying? Yeah, it's a 15-foot sphere centered on a point of my choice within range, so that's going to be right... I'm going to cast it right on the uh, cobalt he's talking to. And what that's going to go ahead and do is uh, guards against deception in a 15-foot radius 
and until the spell ends, a creature that enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there must make a charisma saving throw. So on a failed save, a creature can't speak a deliberate lie while in the radius, and then you know whether each creature succeeds or fails on its saving throw. Okay, what's oh. the uh, saving throw that he's got to make? Um, He has got to make, I th think it's a charisma saving throw. Is Yeah, charisma saving throw is what they got to make. What does it, what does it have to be? Yeah, what's the value? Oh, I don't know. Is that my DC? Uh, that's yes. your spell DC, yeah. Oh, so my DC is 15. I hope that's high enough. Yeah, he didn't make it. Sweet. He that. Got 11. Okay. Okay. You cast your, uh, you cast your spell, your the, uh, Kona Truth, and you can continue asking questions. Um, I'll, I'll call out to the kobold. Please excuse my goblin friend. Um, don't listen to his threats. We just want to know who has been murdering townsfolk. Please tell us what you know. Kobold pauses momentarily, almost as if it wants to lie, but it says it doesn't know. However, because this is the third attack upon their home, they have no issue paying a visit to that town and showing them the same treatment that they've been given third attack what what other attacks the first attack was by heroes the second attack was by bandits and now here you are in their home seeking their treasure as I said, disregard my goblin friend. We don't want your treasure. We didn't mean to intrude on you. We didn't know that there were kobolds here. We're just looking for whoever has been hurting the townsfolk. If you've seen or heard anything, please tell us, and we'll leave you be. They don't know who has been hurting these townsfolk, but they know who's going to. And he says it with, like, uh, a grin. He sighs and pulls out his loot and says, We've got to kill him. They're going to hurt the town. Who says this? You? <laughs> they do. We can't let him go into town. They know who's going to kill? Or wait, hold on, I'm confused. Yuri, you're you're, the, you're oh, saying yeah. that they're gonna go in? That's what you're the telling us? The kobold, yeah. Okay, so you're telling us that they're gonna go in and kill the town? Mm hmm okay. I pull out my short bow and fire a shot at the one that smacked me in the mouth. <laughs> yes. Alright, roll a uh roll the hit. Okay. So what do I do? Do I click on the short bow? Yeah, you just give that a click. It should roll for you. Unless we have to be in combat, which I don't think we do. I'm correct. I've properly done this. I've tested it that out like three times. Oh, well, he's doing there we this. Go. Can I cast a spell on him? I got a nine, and it says plus four, formula, 1d20, plus four, plus four, plus at bonus. And I rolled a nine. All right, so you did nine damage, and your attack was uh, 17. So your attack beat the armor class of him, so 17. And you did how much in damage? I rolled a nine. Okay, so yeah. Where do I got to roll again? Oh, no, you're good. You shot a, uh, yeah, you shot an arrow and it went straight through his mouth, killing him instantly. 
Damn. Oh Can boy, we're gonna have some fun today. Hell yeah. Can I go ahead and cast bless on I mean it's a party of four, so not including me, that's uh the three others in the group. I'm gonna cast it on Tensley, Yuri, and uh God damn it, Fenric. Alright, yeah. Go ahead and cast bless. Okay. So that means you guys, uh, what is it? Uh, target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the attack roll or saving throw for a minute. I think it works. And it takes a sprinkling of holy water. Oh, I wonder why he got so much holy water from the temple. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I just say, Carnivoro, I know that, like, in character, I'm kind of playing the Boy Scout, but I do love how much of a shit disturber, like, uh, your character is. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just, I, I do hope I'm, I'm not just, coming uh, off as annoying, though. <laughs> no, I get it, bro. We're we're playing characters here. It's fun. Cool. I was worried you might be getting pissed at me uh, as well. No, no, no. Not. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just trying to, you know. I honestly, I'm just trying to make sure that we have peace. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's all about the piece for me. Yeah, you're trying to get a piece of something on anyway, right? <laughs> so you're you're casting casting bless upon uh, the party. Yes. All right. So you cast bless upon the party, um, and it's going to last for a minute. So basically, this is how this is going to work. You guys get however many feet of movement you normally have and you move your token that amount of feet so each space is five feet so obviously you know you're going to be moving anything changes or any kind of uh anything that happens i'll let you know but yeah basically you've got 10 turns of bless and you also have this uh kobold so there's not going to be any initiative for this because i kind of hope you guys got the idea of what's occurring right now. Is that the treasure right there? That glowing thing in the middle? No, that's a uh, fire, but you can, you're more than welcome to grab for it. Well, we gotta kill these fuckers first. Um, I'm pulling my hmm. rapier and my whip and uh, having rapier and the whip, one of each. Well, in both hands is what the fuck I'm trying to say here. Well, you guys can roll for initiative amongst yourselves to see who goes first if you guys want to. That way you guys well, aren't saying, let me do this, let me do this. Well, we were... I did kind of already go, didn't I? We could yeah, work with people, went. right? Yep, you guys can work together, do uh, combos if you guys can. Why is my... Why is my emblem just twirling around? Uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. You're on, uh... You're on, uh fucking mobile so yeah it's gonna I don't think it's gonna oh be. where why is my fucking yeah. uh, sign status effect oh no that's not what I want to do how come there's not light around uh, my dude yet light around it oh yeah. my mistake. I need about uh, 60 foot of bright light and uh, additional 60 foot of dim light if you make that happen there DM thank you very yeah, much yeah yeah I can make it happen <clears throat> okay. There you go. Hey, fuck it. Sweet. God. Bright um, as a motherfucker. Alright, so you guys have a singular kobold who is still currently blind, but mind you. He's unable to uh defend himself. And um that's how many feet away is he? One, two, three. I guess he's diagonal. One, two, three. So 15 foot away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, move my guy. How do I move my guy? Uh, You on keyboard and mouse? Yeah. Use the arrow keys. Oh, shit. Look at that. No, oh, hold on. I'm not on the grid. So that was five. Don't 10, worry about the grid. 15. <sighs> 20. Okay. So he's within five foot of me? Yeah, he's within five feet. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit him with the whip. All right. While screaming, go fuck your mother. 
And I'm also going to stab him with the rapier. All right. So you uh, hit him with the whip and, uh, or well, roll the hit with the whip. Okay, let me see what that looks like. Um, da, 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 da. Normal. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that, but I guess we're going to have to fucking take it. So that was 13 to hit, right? Or was that a damage roll? Uh, let's okay, say, now let's I'm. Say, that was to hit. That was to hit, yes. So does it hit? Yes, that hits. That hits hard. Okay, well, now I feel like I should just go ahead and finish this out with the. Uh, fucking virtual okay so you did that with the whip yes all right so you uh crack your whip like uh devo said once and as <laughs> you do your whip just slices deep into the uh the kobold and you just see blood gush and spurt from the open wound as it falls to the ground dead Jesus. okay all right is there uh, anything else we could see? Any other kobolds? Nope, not here. There's at Can least two Oh, you hear them. They're howling right now. Oh. Um. Now, let me take care of uh, Slacker here, because he can't move his character. Where do you want to go? Um, I want to go... Actually, hold on to me. Let me look at my attack spells here real um, quick. Okay. I got. I'm I clicking for that, so it might sign me out of. Yeah, the, I, I, the, I, yeah. I seen that. Yeah. I can't see the map. You can't see the map. Um, what is it black for you? Yeah. All right. Let's see. That's not good. I look. I also. Yeah. Here, I'll. Uh, you're well. Here. That's pretty much it. I'll stream my, uh, my thing. That way you can see it on my end. Can you tell me where you want to go? Um, yeah, I want to go... Pro I, I just want to go up to, um, that kobold on the left, maybe like 10 feet t more towards him. And then I'm going to cast, uh, Vicious Mockery. What what kobold is they're both gone. Are you talking like uh are you talking this thingy right here? It's uh, near the hold fire. On. My, my screen is my, my my shit's buffering. Okay. I I might have to sign back into the I hate this fucking Chromebook, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, shit, yeah, I can't see anything. Um, I but I saw one kobold on the left there. Uh, um, yeah, they they're both dead. The uh, two that were in the room are both dead. Yeah, oh, shit. Okay, then I want to go down the cave, like the left, the uh, on the left. I want to go down there. Because there's two pathways, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, how many? How far can you walk? Uh, is it thirty? Twenty-five. It is twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, uh, Benrick, what about you? You have. Uh, I don't know if you can see my stream. But you have two paths in front of you. Okay, which path would you like to go? Um. I'd like to head towards the path to the right. Okay. And you get, what, 25 or 30? 20, because I'm still thinking 25. Okay. 20, because yeah. I'm thinking, like, as far as I know, my character's still sneaking. I didn't do anything. Yeah, as far as we know, you're still sneaking, so you're heading towards the right, and uh, Tenley, where would you like to go? Left or right? 
Um, I yell out in draconic. Bring out the treasure. We're we're no match for them. And then what's every square is like what five feet? Yeah, every square is five yeah. feet. And I can go how many feet? Uh, I think you can go thirty or twenty five. Let me double check. Hmm. You have thirty feet of movement. Okay, so there's. How do I move it? Do I drag it? Oh, yeah. Uh, you gotta click on it and uh, use the arrow keys. <laughs> so, as far as I could count, I go, I'm going up one, up two, up three, up into the right four, up into the right five, up into the right six. So you're moving. Tempted. Oh, never mind. I said it collides with the wall. Okay. I'm trying to move up to the light. Oh, I guess there's a wall there. up here. Yeah. Um, so here we go. Up one, two, three. Diagonal four. Right five. Okay. Right six. That worked. All right. So you're gonna take the uh, path on the right. I guess so. All right, and let's see. Um. I leave anybody out? Oh, can I look for treasure? Like, how do can I just like s scan the area with my eyes to see if I see where the treasure is? Yeah, there's no treasure in this uh, chamber. It's just uh, blood, uh, campfire, some crappy makeshift weapons, and a couple sleeping bags. That's about it. All right. So, did I get everybody? Did everybody move? Yep. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. I believe so. So, this is what's going to happen. So, let's grab. So, you're either at, goes down mm -hmm. halfway. If I can move your character, I guess not. It goes halfway down the uh, tunnel. Okay. Does your character not have vision? No, he doesn't have dark vision should have a vision that's the problem he's getting no vision oh damn yeah that's uh there we go all right and let's pull this i'm just gonna have to watch on the stream because every time i try to load it on my chromebook uh my computer like my web page crashes yeah damn right so Everyone who's going down the right side goes down the right side. Now, with that being said, you three encounter a kobold. This one is wearing full armor and has what appears to be a club in his hand. And let's see. He looks at you, uh... Why did that get below? He looks at you, uh, Kenley, and swings his club hard at you. Does five hit? Does five hit? What's uh, that mean? Your armor class. Armor class? No, yeah. my armor class is 15. Okay, yeah, so it doesn't hit. So he swings wildly at you, misses completely. Your guys this turn. So, uh, I get to, uh, counter, right? I mean, you can if you want, or if you want somebody else to take, uh, take an attack. But he's five feet from you. I couldn't likely hit him with a short sword, with a raper. You could. You could try uh, how many feet away is he? Five. I uh, I attack him. I, 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 uh, I put an arrow in my short bow and I fling it at his cock. <laughs> Jesus. I think that would be a disadvantage, no, too. I, 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 don't let me say that. I, I shoot an arrow at him, aiming for center mass. All right. That's still a disadvantage because he's so close. 
Damn it. Okay. Good what God. the fuck? What in the Oh, God. he's dead, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's, that fucker's dead. There's no. That's uh, wild, dude. There's I can't no, believe I just did that. Damn, that's a disadvantage, too. Motherfucker got a 28 to hit. Roll that damage. Holy shit. Alright, how do I roll damage? Uh, it should say uh, damage on there. Oh, on the arrows? Yeah. Around the bow, I mean. Damage. Uh, critical hit or normal? Be a critical hit. Six All and right. two. So you shoot an arrow center mass and it passes through the uh, kobold and goes and somehow pulls a Kennedy and hits the one behind him, killing him. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but this one still stands. All right. That was a reaction. So now what do we go back to turns or how does that work? No, no, that wasn't a reaction. That was an action. But who still oh. stands right now? The one the in front. The cobalt in front. Yeah. Uh, any damage at all to this man? Oh, he's hurt. He took an arrow through the fucking chest. Yeah, he's hurting. Okay. Um I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and Dude, Hold on, hold on. Before you go, I I turn to Fenric. I say Now between between me getting you into that place to get the gold in that shot. You know you want to give me some more. Fuck you, We hell. can talk money later. Fuck you, though. Fight, Faye. Help you. Go ahead. Okay, I go ahead and stab this kobold with the rapier. All right. Um, and I'm going to use my active ability of Divine Smite to go ahead and expend... A second level spell slot here. Jesus to Christ! Add an, to add an addition. This is actually pretty fucking fun using some <laughs> of this shit here. Um, to add an extra, so the extra damage is going to be two d eight, and expending a second level spell slot is going to add an additional two d eight on that for a total of four d eight plus my actual damage of the uh, rapier itself if it hits. Up. Which uh, hopefully will fuck his entire life up. He's over here. Yeah, I want to do a divine smite, and uh, I want to stab <laughs> him several times, and uh, yeah, you don't fuck his mother, you know. Yeah, with respect, yeah. with good though. <laughs> with respect, fucking his mother. So, All yeah. right, uh, let me get this rape here. Let's see what the fuck the roll thing is. Jesus what Christ! With the previous roll. All right, so. Just tell me the fucking statue, cunt. Info. How do I fucking find that out? I don't want to roll. I just want to know the fucking statue. He's stats. figuring that out. Um, Yorick. Yori. Sorry, Yorick. <laughs> Jesus, I had like two different names. You're walking <laughs> down the cave unhindered. It appears to be that there's nobody on this side. Okay. Now in a beautiful looking kitchen and now have two potential route well it's not a kitchen it's a uh, forge but you have two potential paths to go down uh i want to go down that lower path okay. well you go to do the lower path are you able to roll the uh roll the it entire... says it says plus eight to hit is that i roll a d20 and then add eight uh yes Oh, fuck. Where did I put my D20? Son of a bitch. Alright, there we are. It's gonna be 6 plus 8. 14. So, and what were you doing? All that uh, fancy uh, Divine Smite stuff? Yeah. So as Does you, it even hit? As you, you know, go to do this uh, god tier damage, amount of damage to the uh, innocent little kobold, <laughs> he uh, lifts his club up and deflects your attack. Barely. But he deflects it. And little does that son of a bitch know. I have a gun! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> 
And little does he know, I got an extra attack, so I'm going to do the same shit again. All right, roll it again. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> oh, motherfucker, hold on. Is that another six, or is that a nine? Nope, that's a fucking six. So it was so, all, the same, all the same numbers? All the same shit. So as you go to swing again... He again manages to deflect your your blow. Fenric, what do you do? Uh, does he know I'm there? Uh, that's actually a good question. I would say he has no idea that you're there even though it is brightly lit up by the, uh, the paladin. He has no idea because you're hiding behind both the paladin and the goblin. So, so I'd have to move closer to hit him. Uh, not necessarily um. unless you're using up close. But if you're well, trying to do gonna... a, if you're trying to do a sneak, there's there's no way you're gonna sneak attack him. Corridor is too narrow, unless you want to do an acrobatics check and get behind him. That's not a right idea. So um, I will well now make myself known and try to attempt to attack him with my short sword. All right, roll to hit. That is a real die. As you guys are oh. here, or as you guys are trying to strike the killing blow to this creature, you uh, hear more and more howls from deeper on in the cave. You guys realize okay. that uh, you lost Yori. He's uh, not with you in the group right now. He's all alone in the oh. cave. Oh, no. I, rolled a, I rolled a ten. A ten? Yeah. As you as you leap out from behind those two and you go to stab the uh stab the kobold, he again somehow, some way, through some perseverance of a god that you <laughs> don't fucking know, blocks your attack with his club and is just standing there blood pouring from the wound of the uh, arrow that was shot through him. This is one persistent ass uh, kobold. <laughs> yeah. Alright, and uh, let's see. He is gonna take a, another swing, but this time at the little bastard that snuck up from behind the two. Jesus Christ. Does 14 hit you, Fenric? Yes, but just barely. Oh. Just a question. Do, is Fenric within five feet of me? Yes. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to use a reaction of interception. Oh. Um, <laughs> using my whip. Um... So if he hits him, I'm going to use my whip there to reduce the damage that uh, Fenric's going to take by 1d plus 1d10 plus my proficiency bonus, which happens to be a 4. Alright. Damn. <laughs> Alright, and uh, he got a 6 on the uh, damage. Also, what does a 1d10 look like? That's the one that's got the uh, fucking... It's got 10 numbers. Yeah, but the one of them's a 0, <laughs> so I'm assuming the 0 is a fucking 10. Uh, I think that's a D hunter. I don't think so. Maybe it is. Can it double? No, 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 no. It looks like the D100, the percentile. But it's, uh, it's not. So this has got to be D10. Yeah. Okay. How much are you oh. reducing this by? Fuck yeah. So that's going to be by 14. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so the... You see this kobold swinging his club at you, and you see the whip grab the club, 
and through some ungodly way, the club just gives you a gentle kiss goodnight. That's about as much damage <laughs> as it fucking did was emotional damage. Good God. <laughs> All right, and we are back to Yuri the Rat. And as right. you're walking, goddamn, as you're walking down this uh, corridor, do you want to uh, sneak or what do you want to do? You just want to walk down the corridor, big dick swinging yeah. in the in the fucking breeze, <laughs> just swinging in the wind. Shit. <laughs> As you do, you come across three kobolds. Oh, perfect. Oh, God. Uh, is, is it still my turn? Am I still able to take an action? You can take an action if you'd like. Yes. Sweet. Sorry, so, Harry, I would have went with you, but uh, Shane, uh, uh, Giovanni's got the light. That's why I went with him. That's fine. Um, I'm going to kind of just point both my fingers at that one at the top. And I'm oh. gonna go. You've been thunderstruck, and I'm gonna cast thunder wave. All right, roll it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh. Shit. Um. No. Oh. So my attack bonus. Okay. Oh wait, thunderstruck is. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not a. It's not a roll. Thunderstruck, they have to make a con save of 16. Oh, on a failed save, on, on a failed save, each creature within a 15-foot cube originating from you must uh, must take 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from you. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. Alright, roll your damage. Hmm. Son of a bitch. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So that's going to be a total of six damage. Fucking hell. All right. So as you sing your you've been thunderstruck, your 15 foot cube hits these uh, kobolds with such ferocity that they just explode before you. Almost as if it's a, a pyro going off at a uh, at a concert. Just, I mean, <laughs> you, you, you pointed it out. They pop. Like wet water balloon, or well, like water balloons filled with meat, killing them instantly. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Damn. And what's worse is he didn't even kill them by a bunch. He killed them by a little bit. All three of them cocksuckers <laughs> fucking failed. <laughs> Jesus! Damn. I had two critical fails and one six. One six, and this <laughs> cocksucker has a negative one to his fucking roll. And it's like, good God! <laughs> but hey, that was fucking Damn. cool. But I gotta take a quick break. I gotta take a leak. Ugh. All right. <laughs> you need to invest in an empty Gatorade battle, my man. You guys are still standing there before the kobold who is bleeding out, but it seems to evade every one of your fucking attacks. And is this right I after I'm I've on my uh grab them with the whip uh yeah this is right after you uh and stopped him from attacking with the uh, with your whip and i ask with that being a reaction and grabbing with the whip is that considered an opportunity attack no an opportunity attack no. is if uh he got within your within five feet of your character and you know tried to go past you like you know uh, ah. you know, go somewhere else, you could attack that way. If he's attacking you and then, you know, decides to back up five feet, that's a, that provokes an opportunity, or attack of opportunity. But no, okay. he, he's not in your, he's not within your reach, because I think you get ten feet with that, uh, or five additional feet with that, uh, that, uh, whip. Okay. Alright. Interesting. Um... Oh, here we go. So, I believe I'm up. Yeah, what you gonna do there, uh, uh, Goblin? Ten so minutes. it looks like he's within five feet of me, right? He is within five feet of you. So is that a, a good range to do a short attack, or do I have to be like right on top of him? Oh, that's perfect. You can't be in the, you can't occupy the same uh, space as him. So you're perfectly 
within your uh, means to attack, doing a you know any kind of attack. Okay, I've got two daggers, so I'm gonna do a double dagger, a double bull dagger attack. It's just, all right. So roll for damage or roll to hit. Dave, you can hit him. <laughs> double, <laughs> double bull dagger. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Jesus. Damn. I got a seven, but I got a plus four, a plus four, plus four. So that was 15. Mm. Yeah. That barely hits. Roll damage. Roll damage. And then this time, would it be critical hit or normal? It'd just be a normal. Jesus. Got a four. All right. So you, uh, Stab him with your dagger, and it hits cleanly. You hit him, and it is pierced deep into him. But he is somehow, by some ungodly fucking way, still holding on, clinging to oh dear God. life. But you see that he is wavering. He is getting close to meeting his maker. Do I get to? Do I have the opportunity to do any sort of like uh, count extra attack or something like? That? I remember you guys used to do that. I think you could still attack if you have, because I think your character can uh, attack twice, and I think yeah, that's he, only with daggers. Yeah, he okay, has cool. the two I, weapon fighting action. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. All right, I attack again, and oh, this shit. time we got a 19 plus eight. <laughs> Damn, a 27. So, I'm rolling a critical hit. Uh, It was a... Does your character get crits off of 19? I don't know. I don't, I don't think, I don't I don't think so. I think it's just a 20 oh. you get a crit. Oh, okay. Um, So normal damage. I mean, I it three. Wouldn't, yeah, really, three. wouldn't really fucking matter, because... Uh, yeah, so you, as you have your knife buried into this fucking kobold, you uh, look at him, and you know what, I'm not even going to say, you tell me, how do you kill this motherfucker? What do you say, or what do you do? <laughs> I stick my dagger into his heart, and I whisper in his ear in draconian, the hearts of our town, three hearts have been stolen from our town. I'll replace one of them with yours. And I cut his fucking heart out and put it in his mouth. Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. All right. And so then you... I cut off his mouth. <clears throat> so, I can keep his heart. so you cut you cut this uh, kobold's uh, heart out with relative ease and surgical precision. And you feed him his own heart. And then you said you cut his mouth off? So I can keep the heart, yeah. Oh, okay. So you cut it. I forgot then... I was supposed to keep the heart. It was a moment of passion. <laughs> I cut his mouth off with the heart in it. And he collapsed. His body collapses to the floor. And, yeah, you successfully killed that kobold. And I turned it... to the guy smiling. I told you we were going to have some fun today. I think you need to go to the church more often. <laughs> you need Christ. <laughs> I Perhaps know you a can guy. Help me with an offering for the donation plate. It's uh, <laughs> I think you need some fucking prayer, my friend. Jesus. And we. Luckily, will... I know yeah. a guy that builds chairs. And also <laughs> save souls. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will uh, end our our one shot here, and we will pick this back up uh, a couple weeks from now. Yeah, yeah two right. weeks from now, I shouldn't be a fucking buzzkill if it runs long.